our host tonight, so. Oh my god, an actual guest host who's currently working in the industry? Yeah, so we need a lot of good sketches. Have we got anything? <laughs> oh, uh, what if we do a, a puppet song about how Vern and Ernie aren't gay? They're not gay? They've been living together for like 20 years. <laughs> I think it's been longer than that. All right, well, you know what? The key to comedy is historical accuracy. Hang on a second. <laughs> hey, baby girl. Hey, George. <laughs> Can you get us a fix on what year Bert and Ernie moved in together? Yeah, Bert and Ernie first appeared on Sesame Street in 1969. Thank you, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> they moved in together in 69. Next. Uh, well, uh, I'm seeing they're doing something on the Iowa straw poll and how those people get all their power. Great, so how do the people get their power? I don't know, George. My degree's in nursing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, baby girl. Can you tell us anything about the Iowa straw poll people? Yeah, it looks like the candidates, they, they entice voters into voting for them by having special attractions. Michelle Bachman at a petting zoo and Randy Travis in her tent. Or sometimes they just outright pay for the votes. Thanks, baby girl. <laughs> <laughs> they get their votes in a very American way. Anybody else? Well, Kim Kardashian is getting married this weekend. Oh, well, you know what? I sort of wish my fat ass was shaped like her fat ass so I could dump my husband and get a good sugar daddy in VA. <laughs> now, are we sure that's happening this weekend? Because according to TV Guide, the Kardashians are taking a family trip and they're going to show the girls how to fly fish. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't watch that show because I live that show. <laughs> <laughs> Baby girl. Kim and Chris Kardashian are getting married on Saturday. Now, how did you know what question I was going to ask? Because I wouldn't be doing my job if I couldn't read your mind. <laughs> and I'm like three feet away from you right now. <laughs> oh, oh. Next. Oh, uh, I have a, a funny idea for a sketch where uh, every other it revolves around every other character saying the word fuck. And, and then it has like very strong racial undertones to it. Yeah, let's be already wrote this. <laughs> okay, well, so Rick Perry is running for president, right? So what if we did a scene where all the cast members argued over who gets to play Rick Perry? Like, I think I should play Rick Perry because my dad's name is Rick, right? Rick Perry. Rick Perry's gonna have a combination of rugged good looks and determined quiet spiritualism that almost borders on the fanatical. <laughs> I wonder if we have anybody like that in our cast, baby girl. Well, there's only one person working on Second City this week who has the right mix of good looks, charisma, and fanatical devotion, yeah. George. Yeah. Unfortunately, Ron is drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> What a week it was. Rick Perry had experimental surgery this week ut utilizing stem cells to heal his back. That's great. The candidate that's against evolution doing something that Wolverine could do naturally. <laughs> Israel has launched retaliatory, retaliatory strikes against Palestine in a conflict that has been going on since 1948. The score is now 1,897,237 to Palestine's 968,344. Obama campaign advisor Robert Gibbs said the president is not obsessed with being reelected. Those who have followed Obama's efforts for the past three years responded, duh. <laughs> An ad for Smart Water garnered seven million hits on YouTube because it used the title Jennifer Aniston Sex Tape. Inspired by the ad, Republican dark horse John Huntsman of Utah changed his campaign's name to Katy Perry Emma Stone Lesbian Three-Way 2012. <laughs> Ann Coulter recently said that it is, in fact, possible to pray the gay away. But sometimes it leaves behind a little telltale. <laughs> Speaking of gays, let's remember that gay couples have the same troubles that heterosexual couples do. So what brings you to therapy? Well, Dr. 
Doctor. We've been living together. But I'm here to find out why Bert always gets to go first. <laughs> As I was saying, we have been living together for 40 years. And during those 40 years, there have been plenty of rumors about us. But until recently, it hasn't been so bad. But the internet has made it even worse. And it's not bothered us uh, up until now. Bert, how does that make you feel? Well, frankly, it, it ticks me off. I mean, come on, do we look gay? We've been wearing the same shirts for 40 years. Show me two gay guys who do that. And I have a unibrow, like I can't find a stylist. I'm gay, remember? I don't, I don't know, Bert. I don't know. We shop together, uh, we bathe together, we sleep together. In separate beds, Ernie. Bert, I think we're gay. We're not gay! <laughs> Issue, but I've got some good news for you. You are neither male nor human, and ergo, you're neither straight nor gay. You don't have any genitalia. But, uh, Jenna, what do you? You know, genitals. <laughs> the old steak and potatoes. The old uh, twigs and berries. The old franken beans. You know, big dick and the twins. <laughs> the old bald headed yogurt slinger. The old baloney pony. The old meat thermometer. The old one-eyed wonder worm. The old steam and semen roadway. Cork and balls. I'm not quite following. <laughs> you guys don't have anything going on down there. But, uh, you mean we're supposed to have something going on down there? Well, most creatures do. But it's okay that you don't. You're asexual. And I have a lot of patients who have that issue. For example, Barbie and Ken, G.I. Joe and Ken, and they want to live very fulfilling lives. I just don't think I understand you. Boys, your puppets. You mean like those tea party people? <laughs> like Sherry Lewis and Lamb Shop. That's why that guy has always had his hands up my ass. <laughs> Let's be clear. You guys don't have asses, except for in some very carefully composed Muppet movie scenes. You are mere puppets created by the late, great Jim Henson. You are controlled by the executives at Sesame Street who determine everything you're going to say and do. Ooh, we're, we're like Ryan Seacrest. Teenies date with the Oprah and Gale. So uh, if I could actually get you guys to hang out for a group, that would be great because I've got a couple of patients who are a little confused about your orientation or lack thereof. Bert, you were my hero. Ernie, you were mine. The two of you together were a gay life line. Say you love each other. Say it. Check. 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 
Yeah. Chris, of course we're getting married. It says so in the script. At least that's what Carol told me. Who is Carol? She's my dialect coach who reads my script for me. Okay. <laughs> Honey, it, it just it seems like you're doing all of this for the TV show. That is so not fair! Okay. <laughs> just look, look at what's happened here. They moved our wedding from a church to some TV place in Burbank. Whoa, whoa, whoa! This is the set where Phoebe got married in Friends. <laughs> they replaced your sister Chloe with a fat chick from Bridesmaids. Because she tested way better than Chloe. <laughs> and you know what? I don't understand why the cast of Jersey Shore is here. <laughs> they did throw a fantastic bachelor party. <laughs> but the situation should not be my best name. No, Chris, <laughs> we all have to make sacrifices. I mean, look at me. They won't even let me wear white, and I don't know why. <laughs> Listen, Kim. <laughs> I just, I care about you. I don't care about the cameras lights or the sound. I just care about us sharing this moment with our family and friends and not the VH1 audience. Check. 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 CNN article reports that the U.S. military is going green. The study cites that minimizing the armed forces' dependence on oil saves soldiers' lives, since one out of eight U.S. Army casualties in Iraq is the result of protecting fuel convoys. We take you now to a green military base in the near future. Ten hot you! enjoyed the Kim Kardashian sketch because she is appearing at the 2011 Do Something Awards. <laughs> Scientists fear the paradox may collapse the universe. A store in Long Beach opened where everything is free. The store is already 14 trillion dollars more profitable than the United States government. 
A Michigan man tried to drive his truck home using only his feet as brakes. <laughs> he also made the mistake of taking the family dinosaur to the drive-in and ordering the Bronto Burger ribs. <laughs> An Australian study finds that watching one hour of television can take 22 minutes off your life. This means I died in 1998. <laughs> in Beijing, an exhibition basketball game between Georgetown and a Chinese team ended badly when a fight broke out. Sources say the fracas erupted when a Chinese player called a Georgetown player a Sinaipi Hiuji. Oh, snap. <laughs> Michelle Bachman won the Iowa Straw Poll last week, but the question many people are asking is, just what is the Iowa Straw Poll? How can a small, informal collection of voters from the American heartland take on such importance, dominating the news cycle and ending the candidacy of Governor Tim Pawlenty? For answers, we've assembled a panel of experts, James Clifford, senior executive at MSNBC, Janice Wilkins, senior editor at Fox News, and Second City This Week political analyst Steve Brewster. Steve, what is the Iowa Straw Poll? Uh, well, George, uh, the Iowa Straw Poll is a uh, random collection of about 20,000 Iowans who each pay $30 for a ticket to uh, hang out with the contestants at an all-day picnic and uh, then they cast their all-important vote for the politician who uh, provides the most fun. <laughs> That's it? Well, there's a little more to it than that. Oh, well, I would hope so. Yeah. Well, the all-day event actually allows the candidates to really get to know the voters, to, to reveal their platform and express it in much detail. It's, it's true democracy. Not just the usual dog and pony show. Oh, although there were ponies. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember the two who did the soft shoe tap uh, number in uh, the Bachman? <laughs> Wait, we, Michelle Bachman actually had dancing ponies? Uh, well, it was actually a petting zoo, George. These uh, ponies just happened to start dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Bachman had a petting zoo in her tent? And Randy Travis. Oh, he was good. He was good. <laughs> she had a petting zoo and a music concert? Oh, George, that's how they get their message out. And what about that Cajun calamari? Oh, oh. <laughs> did, did you folks check out Valenti's dance? <laughs> oh, God! That food was inedible! <laughs> George, George, for entertainment, he showed a video of the founding of Minnesota. How does it affect, affect like this take on so much importance? A bunch of random people pay 30 Oh, no, well, most of them don't pay anything. No. Oh, yeah, Michelle Bachman paid for busloads of her supporters to for you. And that's allowed? <laughs> yeah. For crying out loud, how, what kind of way is this to elect a Republican candidate? I mean, how can you people devote hundreds of hours of television time to this? Well, it's really, you know, it's, it's not actually a good way to uh, pick a candidate. Actually, there's only been, uh, last 30 years, uh, two winners have gone on to get the nomination. Yeah. Pat Robertson won in 87. Pat who? <laughs> It's the Iowa Strong Poll. It's very important, George. Very important. <laughs> How? How? Well, it's uh, democracy. Uh, uh, popularism. Uh, the, uh, the, the petting zoo vote is... I have 24 hours. <laughs> 24 hours to fill, seven days a week, 365 days a year. If I don't give those right-wing wackos their daily dose of red meat, I'm gone. I'm, I'm done. You have no idea what the pressure is like. No, oh, I mean, they will literally kill me. I mean, what am I supposed to do until next November, George? I, I mean, I gotta work. My ex-wife is bleeding me. She's I, bleeding me. I've got three kids to put through Ivy League school. I mean, she just, you know how much that costs. The American media, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this just in, Texas Governor Rick Perry called global warming a contrived phony mess that is falling apart under its own weight. Leading scientists pointed out that the same can be said about Perry's bid for president. <laughs> Because I don't watch the news, which means you don't watch the news. News is for pussies. 
<laughs> That's exactly what I say. Yeah, it was this for pussies. Anyway, I'm running for president of the United States, just like you did. Oh, wow. That is some news, although I should not be surprised. You're governor of Texas, like I was governor of Texas. It's like we're the same person. <laughs> That's exactly what the liberal media is saying. It's like we're the same person. Why? Why? Just because we're two uh, old, white, Christian fundamentalist men from West Texas who talk alike and kind of look alike and flunked their way through college and joined the Air Force and flew a plane and then fell their way upwards to become governor of Texas? Why? That is preppy ostriches. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what I say, preppy ostriches. <laughs> hey, 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 you want to come over? Sure. <laughs> Raped a gladiator. Oh, oh, that's just what I was going to say. I know. You know, it's like we finish each other's vegetables. Oh, man. that is something. That is something. Oh, ow. <laughs> Did you just feel that when I stubbed my toe? Is that what happened? Did I just feel your pain? Son of a bitch, this is blowing my mind. It's like we're two twins that were separated at birth, but now are reunited. No, no, don't hey. do that. That spider, it was in my drink. How'd you know that? <laughs> <laughs> you can read my mind, feel my pain, see into my future. Well, that just means it. That's right, W. I am you from the future. <laughs> and I have come here to deliver some terrible news. <laughs> the soup and salad place on Manchester will be closed this afternoon for a rat infestation. <laughs> no! And I will be running under the name Rick Perry for presidency in 2012. And after I am elected, I will destroy the United States as we know it. You sneaky son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> It is my belief that a government that is true and good, in which every man has his say, shall lead every man, young, old, rich, or poor, to serve the greater good of this nation. Mm. <laughs> yes, Oreos. Sounds <laughs> sounds lovely. What if there were a body of media? The body of media was buried this morning. Kind and firm, subtle, robust. No, I, I know. I think a, a, a group of individuals whose duty it is to educate the public and provide news. Now, what if such a media existed, but became so biased and so partisan that rather than providing the citizens with news, they attempted to manipulate them? <laughs> A biased opinion spread so far and so vast as to even affect the smallest uh, election. You see, it, it is impossible, or else, and one of little concern. What if a governing body becomes so ideologically divided that they become so concerned with their own self interest that they, they no longer legislate and instead play political tricks just to win re election? <laughs> Hepatitis. Sweet hepatitis. How is it that a man can legislate against his own government? A government is the backbone of his prosperity. You see, the invisible hand of democracy shall lead every leader towards the common. Uh, yes. Yeah. please. all I've heard so far is man this and man that. Where does the woman fit in? Fallopia, <laughs> 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 who let you in here? Or else feed her to a lion. Yeah. <laughs> Women are less than men. 
everywhere and the corporations have all this political sway and then with all the morons in charge what if they elect a group of assholes <laughs> um, then we're In a new interview, Donald Trump said he might run for president after all. If he does run, he's expected to be the front runner for the nomination of the attention whore party. <laughs> Barney's is teaming up with Lady Gaga for a Christmas window display called Gaga's Workshop. She really wants to capture the holiday spirit by dressing elves up in raw meat. The nation of French Guiana is infested by an aggressive species of moth. The country's brightest citizens are all victims because as soon as anyone comes up with a moth elimination idea, they are immediately attacked. <laughs> U.S. leaders advised Syria's President Assad to step down, meaning the U.N. will create a new country exclusively for deposed wacky Arab dictators. DNA was found in a meteorite this week. Scientists are excited, but avid watchers of Criminal Minds know one thing. There's been a murder in space. <laughs> Speaking of cop shows, we take you now to a detective squad room. What we got today? It's a bizarre one. Large scale brainwash of pure and mitigated evil. And it's a woman. But women don't usually commit these crimes. Mm. Actually, that's a common misinterpretation of the data. Although we don't expect to find a violent female criminal unless she's accompanied by a male partner, uh, statistically, the female gender is responsible for about one quarter of the violent crimes within the United States. Does anyone understand what he just said? <laughs> Our suspect is this woman. Michelle Bachman. It's Minimal Minds. <laughs> Starring Greg from Dharma and Greg. <laughs> Hall of Fame quarterback Joe Montana. That happens a lot. Actually, I'm Joe Mantegna. I want to Some other people. <laughs> With Elaine Hamill as Kirsten Banks Ness as Penelope Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Bachman, now how are we going to figure out what she's up to? We've got to get inside her head. I'll give Garcia a call. Oh, no, I'll take care of that. Her and I have this totally non-threatening, non-creepy, flirtatious thing going on. <laughs> Hello. Hey, baby girl. What can I do for you, my tawny god of love? I'm going to be all up in that someday. <laughs> I bet it's like an arm. Oh! <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I mean, I haven't been in the sack in like a week and a half, so we might have taken it slow. Morgan, you want to speak to you? Need a profile on Michelle Buck. Sure. Hey, right, doing cool computer things. Doing cool computer things. Doing cool computer. Got it. Okay, Michelle Bachman, a tax lawyer who quote hates taxes and oh, oh my, I have seen enough crazy eyes in my day to know that this woman has clinically crazy eyes. Thanks, baby girl. Mm. Hey, when are we gonna do this? Okay. Thing? <laughs> this Michelle Bachman situation is worse than I thought. You know, these types of people typically trick their own followers into acting against their own self-interest by manipulating their own personal beliefs. The worst thing that could happen 
is if this woman gains some sort of elected, powerful government office. Uh, bad news, guys. Michelle Bachman is running for president. Morgan, did you come for CSI? I am lonely! <laughs> running for president is real bad news. Luckily, there's no way someone so dangerous could gain any political traction. You're wrong, hot stuff. Hey, that was our thing! <laughs> I'm lonely. <laughs> Michelle Bachman actually just won the Iowa straw poll last week. Well, according to Steve Brewster, the Iowa straw poll... What are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> My God. Don't worry about it. I've already got an agent out there who's gonna sabotage the whole political career. Yeah, hello. Hey, Mr. Palenti. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm just calling to check. You what? Long day, Mr. Buffett. Yes, Waldo. You broke yourself today, Mr. Buffett. Yes, Waldo, I like the echoey squeal of tires in a parking garage. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Buffett. <laughs> Don't a lot of trouble, Buffett. Donald Trump! <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you need to be taxed more, huh? Well, that's right. We've been caught on long enough. <laughs> you need to watch what you say, Buffett. You need to check with the rest of us first. It's a free country. Bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Mr. Trump? How you doing, Mr. Buffett? Mr. Gates? Oh, Bill! Bill! Don punched me! Uh, shouldn't punch him. You need to kick him like this. <laughs> because that's what we do when rich guys write articles in the New York Times trying to tax us more! Oh, oh. Do your worst. I made $14 million on some stock I owned for 10 minutes. Oh, oh, oh. and still. I'll be taxed on it as if it was a long-term investment. That isn't right. It's not right, but it's just the way it is. You better think next time before you talk about raising taxes. What is going on? Oprah, Oprah. <laughs> Make them stop. I wrote what I wrote for the good of the country. I don't know what's funnier. That you wrote that, that you believe that, that you want me to believe that, or that you're bleeding. <laughs> this is something I do know. I am black. I am a woman. I am a TV star. I was abused. I am a kingmaker. And I am also mega rich. And nobody touches that! <laughs> oh, oh, please! I'm old! <laughs> As the stock market fluctuated, the President and Congress were all on vacation this week. You know, I shudder to think what would have happened if they'd all shown up for work. <laughs> Charlie Sheen took the stage at the gathering of the Juggalos over the weekend where he was booed and had bottles thrown at him. Said one Juggalo, Charlie Sheen is nothing more than a gimmick, man. We came out here to mosh and listen to rap music dressed as clowns. <laughs> 9-11 has started accepting emergency transmissions via new media. So far, dispatchers have gotten seven drunken te texts asking to get back together, yo. <laughs> Forbes recently published an article warning its rich white male readers about the dangers of testicular cancer in San Diego, resulting from the nuclear disaster in Fukushima. You know, let's hope that sort of fear-mongering doesn't spread to other media. I'm a lonely isotope, I'm here from Fukushima. I'm voting on a jet stream and I sure would like to meet ya. Hi! I'm a particle of radioactive sulfur 35 expelled from the nuclear meltdown in Japan. But you can call me Sassy. Would you be my friend? Sure.
<laughs> I don't feel so good. Oh. <laughs> My new friend died. <laughs> Get you to quit, okay? Okay. So, what about this one? Hole in the throat. Nope. 
This one looks more like an STD ad, but is it going to get you to stop smoking? No. No? Okay. What about this one? Uh, that is troubling. What about this one? If there is the possibility of smoking turning me into Michelle Bachman, um, look at the eyes. Those are some pretty crazy eyes. Obviously, the images were not going to deter smokers, but this may only be the beginning of the government's attempt to control the tobacco companies. Uh, what if they were required to change the names of cigarettes? So what if you had to walk in and say, yeah, I'd like a pack of death sticks. What about poison packs? Poison packs? That's what their name would be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they are poison, isn't it? Okay. What about baby killers? I would like a pack of killing me slowly, please. <laughs> Instant abortion. I'd like a pack of little rods of cancer. A pack of murder. What if you said I'd like a pack of the next best thing to a dick in my mouth? <laughs> Are you smoking? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. What do you think about these new labels for cigarettes? I think they're really good. I think they should warn people that cigarettes are going to kill them. I mean, people are buying stuff that's just going to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> it seems that Americans love their vices a little too much for any regulation. So bring it on, FDA. Bring it on. A Nebraska jail discovered that cats helped relieve the stress of inmates. The only issue is how to dispose of all the strangled cats. <laughs> <laughs> to promote her new book, Troublemaker, Christine O'Donnell appeared on Piers Morgan. Piers asked her views on gay marriage, and Christine said, I'm here to talk about the book. And he said, okay, it's in the book, and I want to talk about what's in the book. And she said, I'm not here to talk about what's in the book. I'm here to promote the book. And then he said, to promote the book, you have to talk about what's in the book. And then she called him rude, and he said, what? And then she said, he's on third. And he said, who's on third? And she said, who's on first? And he said, who's on first? And she said, yes. <laughs> In an interview on Meet the Press, Mrs. Bachman said she does not judge gay people. She does, however, marry them. <laughs> Bachman supporters claim that her recent Newsweek cover photo was selected to make her look crazy. Maybe the criticism is justified. But for an attractive woman like Michelle Bachman, She does take some really goofy pictures. Marcus, I want tea! <laughs> My name is Joe Gillis. I used to be an award-winning photojournalist until the hooch got the better of me. I was poisoned to all the editors in town, and an old pal threw me a cover assignment for Newsweek. again because my public demands it. They want limited government and fresh ideas all wrapped up in a pretty face. <laughs> I'm sure that's true, Mrs. Cochran. Now if you'll just smile and hold still, I'll get this first shot. <laughs> I hated self-important people, but sometimes it was interesting to see just how self-important self -important could be. <laughs> This is my good side. I've been practicing in front of a mirror during campaign trials. Tra what do they call them? Ca the thing I'm doing with campaign. <laughs> Mrs. Bachman, please, just relax and hold still and don't be intimidated by the camera. Oh, the camera loves me! My public loves to see me in front of the camera! <laughs> Twist of her lips, contortion of her body. I saw my career come back down a slow, painful death. Okay, let's try something. Oh, that's great. That's terrific. Now just, just, just hold your head in your hand downward, like, 
like that. And here we go. <laughs> Mrs. Bachman, you're the active woman. Now, if you would just hold still and relax, I would be able to truly capture your inner and outward beauty. You find me beautiful? You find me so beautiful that you want to capture my beauty for all the ages? <laughs> I'm a lonely woman trapped in a loveless marriage by a man who is disgusted by a woman's touch. All I've ever wanted was the love of a small business professional <laughs> like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Sparkman, call please. me Michelle! and small mortar fire. We did. We even took Viagra and used our penises as weapons and raped large sections of the mass populace. <laughs> <laughs> we did that. We did that. <laughs> we did that with our penises. That's <laughs> below you. <laughs> we use our swords. Yes. Spears. Yes. Rocks. Yes. Papers. Yes. Scissors. <laughs> <laughs> Did we write a letter to the President of the United States apologizing to him from my brother Hussein? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we call them names? Yes. <laughs> well, what happened? They employed the we are rubber, you are glue claw. Ah! <laughs> Clever. <laughs> Fine. We must settle for a last resort. Fire a scud missile. Yes, Colonel Gaddafi. <laughs> 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 Did we hit anything? No Scud missile has ever hit anything. <laughs> Finally, something that works the way it's supposed to. <laughs> the NFL suspended Terrell Pryor five games for selling team memorabilia at Ohio State. Copies of the ruling autographed by Pete Carroll are on sale at NFL.com. 
A group of tourists visiting Alaska's Tracy Arm Fjord were nearly killed by a falling chunk of a 200-foot glacier. After being taken into custody, the glacier confessed it was sick of you people doing nothing about global warming and took matters into its own hands. <laughs> its own frosty hands. A teen was stabbed at a Philadelphia police-sponsored anti-violence bowling event. Police tried to arrest the attacker after the strike, but he split. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of crime, <laughs> this fall on CBS, there is a detective show like none you've ever seen before. There's no physical evidence. There's no eyewitnesses. And even though he just died, there's no DNA. This case is destined to be a cold case. Chief, I know who did it. It was that man. He was born October 24th, 1978, the same year the Toronto Blue Jays beat the Atlanta Braves in the World Series, and he has a gun, but it's not loaded. Detective Charlize Ryan is a medium, a mind reader, and has a photographic memory. She's also an animal whisperer and can see the future. This fall, Elaine Hamill is perfect memory, mind reading, animal whisperer, medium detective who sees the future, SVU. No crime will go unsolved. Not while Detective Charlie's Ryan is around. Detective Charlie's Ryan, how can you even be sure my client was in town, let alone the one responsible for his wife's murder? Because his dog Stryker and cat Fluffers told me <laughs> they saw him kill his wife! Damn you, Detective Ryan! Announcer, say something! Working as an FBI profiler for the Sex Crime and Defecation Unit, <laughs> Detective Ryan has seen it all. Raped, and then I was peed upon. <laughs> I know that. I'm a fucking psychic. <laughs> also, a ghost told me in a dream the other night, and I had a premonition about it last week during the spinning class. <laughs> Why didn't you warn me? <laughs> Detective Ryan doesn't let anyone get away with anything. Not even her husband, Paul. So, honey, uh, tonight for dinner, I would really Yeah, to Chinese, I know. And no, I won't wear the lingerie that you bought me last year for my birthday and then give you a blowjob after Conan. I have a headache. Not only does Detective Ryan communicate with the supernatural, but she's also a super mom. Mommy, we were just building sandcastles, my new friend Toby and me. Can he stay for dinner? No, because he'll grow up to be a pedophile. <laughs> also starring Carrie Ann Pishnak as Elaine Hamill, as Kirsten Banksness, as Penelope Garcia, the quirky computer app who provides exposition. I did a target rich environment search, and it turns out the killer is probably a middle school algebra teacher in Pasadena who buys books on explosives from Barnes and Noble and is allergic to tree nuts. Here is the MapQuest directions. <laughs> <laughs> and when she doesn't know who did it, she just makes some shit up. <laughs> it was that man right there! That is a picture of John F. Kennedy! <laughs> this fall, CBS redefines justice. Chief, the killer is Harold Mills. He lives ten miles away and right now, he's watching reruns of Tabitha Salon Takeover. What the fuck are we supposed to do for the rest of the episode? <laughs> Perfect memory, mind reading, animal whisper, medium detective who sees the future, SVU. No crime will go unsolved. In fact, no crime will be committed. Not while Detective Charlie's Ryan is around. <laughs>